uh, this is the kettle portion of what has come to be known as the stove still. Um, this is a device that I invented about six years ago, five years ago, that I didn't really do, I didn't really uh, develop it to sell. I just developed it for my own research purposes. Because there's really nothing out there that you could get at the time to do small scale distillation. And the reason I wanted to do this, I was working for another large company at the time as a senior chemist. By the way, that's my background. I'm a chemist. I have a PhD in chemistry, and my training in, is specifically in the analysis of essential oils and other natural products. Um, and the reason I wanted to do distillation was to uh, confirm that the oil that we were buying from large companies who were producers of essential oils was matching the oil that was coming out of the plant. Because I don't know if you know it or not, there's a huge amount of adulteration going on. And rather than just take people's word for it from literature reports and so forth, because even those can be corrupt, I wanted to do my own distillation. Check GCMS. So I needed something that was small scale, that I, you know, wasn't expensive, and there was nothing available. So I said, well, I'm just going to make my own thing. So I contacted a glass blower, had him design me a Clevenger. This is called a Clevenger. This is what is uh, actually used to collect the oil, it's, or the distillation head, the type of distillation head that's used to collect. The oil. This is just an ordinary pressure cooker that I've adapted with this stainless steel fitting to, uh, to accommodate this lab joint. This is a standard laboratory joint. It's a 2440 joint. And um, this is a, what's called a cold finger condenser. And this is what's going to allow us to get the oil back into liquid phase after it goes into the gaseous phase and condense back down on this and drop into the trap. So what we got to do is, the process of steam distillation is very simple. It's been around for hundreds of years um, since the alchemist days. In fact, it's the alchemists who, where we got, where, it's where we got the term essential oil. Um, the alchemists in their pursuit to find what's called the fifth element. You know, they, they believe in four elements and, the, and there was a fifth. They had Four that they knew of: earth, uh, air, fire, and water. Right? But they all believed that there was this fifth element out there, the quintessence. And so they, when they discovered distillation, they started distilling everything, trying to find this fifth essence, this fifth element. And uh, when they came, when they finally hit upon an aromatic plant that yielded an oil. They thought they had found the fifth element. Quintessence, they call it quintessence, and that's what the term essential oil comes from. So basically, it's, it's a very simple process. You're just using water, uh, heated water, to create steam, and the steam will then lift out the oil from the tank. Now, these are lavender flowers. What I'm going to do is put about three liters of water in this kettle. Now, this is, we're not separating the botanical from the water. So this would be more of a hydro distillation. It's a similar thing. If you're going to do a true steam distillation, you would have a separator, and I have it for this, but uh, it's better to do hydro for this one. Uh, you'd have a separator, and uh, you'd put the water in, separate it, botanical on top of that, and the steam rises up and passes through. With this, we're just going to put the botanical correctly in the water. So I need, uh, I'm going to need a couple more. I'm going to get a couple more. I can get it. Three liters of water in there. Well, this, I just did a distillation with the same kettle yesterday just to make sure everything's working properly. So you're smelling the residue from another lab of distillation. Now, this is not going to use very much, is it? Well, it, it all depends on the plant that you're doing. And um, 
for lavender, true lavender, Augusta, Angusta folia, and you're only going to be getting about a 1% yield. For lavender, you might have heard of lavender. Mm -hmm. Lavender is a hybrid lavender. Um, Lavendula hybrida. And it will yield higher. It will yield about 5 to 6%. But the downfall is that the odor is more camphoraceous and the distance from it, not as sweet as floral. And actually, a lot of companies will sell lavender as lavender. They call it lavender 4042. What's some it's a lot cheaper, too. Yeah. But people don't know the difference. What's some of the things lavender is recommended for? Well, that's, well, you know, it, the lavender got its fame. It's probably one, you know, aromatherapy's been around for thousands of years, but modern aromatherapy has only been around, you know, for 100 years or whatever, I guess. And it's got its kind of fame from Gattafossi in France when he burned his hand. He was a chemist working in perfume. He was a perfume chemist burned his hand in the laboratory, stuck his hand in a vat of lavender, which is like the nearest thing he had available to him, and saw that it healed up very quickly. He thought, hmm, there's something to do these oils. And so lavender had gotten a reputation for being good for burns and like that. So, uh, and that was kind of the birth of modern aromatherapy as it's sort of practiced today by the French. He's kind of one of the fathers of that. Anybody ever heard that story before? Yes. So, but mainly, lavender has a reputation for being a very sedative, relaxing type of oil. True lavender. Lavender would be relaxing. Even though it's, it's similar chemically, what you have in lavender is a higher camphor and senior content, which actually has a reverse effect. And so while it has the same components of lavender, those elevated uh, camphor and senior will affect the therapeutic quality of the oil and how it affects the person. So you do not want to use lavender in place of lavender. All I did here was grease that joint, put it into the to this, and we're going to prepare it. It's heating right now. It's going to take a little while for that much water to boil. Get that. He's got. He's got. This is just some non-reactive silicone grease. Mm -hmm. uh, you also would. This is a stuff called stop, stop powder that allows to drain the oil out from the time. It also should be greased lightly because there's a small hole in the center of it that you do not want to. Uh, if you put too much grease on, you'll fog it up. do is just put uh, some water in the trap here just to uh, test it and make sure that it's draining it is. Okay. Final step of setting this up is okay we've got a, we've got our trap on, we've got the stuff in there heating. We need a way to condense and make sure that it all just doesn't go out into the atmosphere. And that's where this condenser comes in handy. Mm -hmm. So what I I had to devise a way to condense the oil and recycle. You got to run cold water through the condenser, and 
rather than just sit there and in some areas, you know, the water is precious and it costs a lot of money and you just don't want that water running for several hours. So I had to figure out a way to recycle the same water over, over, over and over again. And what I use is this very typical common garden pump that you would use to like power a garden fountain or something like that. Put it into a cooler. And hook the pump up to, this is the water inlet arm on the top. As you can see, there's a tube that runs through the center of this condenser. The water comes in this tube down and it pushes it back out again to the top of this side. Okay? So what you'll do, you hook the pump into the inlet side, and then you have a separate tube going back into the water reservoir, and it's going to just recycle the same water over and over again. So then we'll need to put water in here, and then we'll put ice on top of that. starts coming over before I put the ice in there. It's the ice in the smell. And the steam condenses on that? Exactly. What? Okay. First of all, I need to put uh, something in there to vent this because you don't want to build up pressure in there. So what I, tip, what I usually would use would be like a piece of aluminum foil. But I don't think I have any. So... these paper because it saturates with water and it doesn't do the best job. Use this. You can use anything. That's a too thick. You don't want to vent it too much because then you lose oil. What about some gum? That would work. Okay. Work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's right. So what I'm going to do is just, I don't, you don't grease this, because then it would seal. You just slip something in there to give it some venting to let the pressure out when it's coming over. Otherwise, what will happen is, if that's sealed, you got a closed system and you're heating a closed system. What will happen is, the water will get above 100 degrees Celsius in there, because it's under pressure. And then when it reaches the point where the pressure is great enough that this pressure release valve here kicks in and pops up, you've got superheated water that's above its boiling point, so it's going to flash vaporize. It'll flash vaporize and shoot up this thing and ruin everything. So you want to keep this vented at all times. Okay, so this is going to sit here for an hour or so until that probably gets, yeah, until that boils. And then, <clears throat> then we'll see what's going to happen is that steam's going to lift that oil out of the, the flowers. <coughs> it will hit this condenser. The oil and water will drop down into this trap. Now the water is heavier than the oil and they're immiscible. So the oil just floats on top of the water. You'll see two layers. And this, as we fill this up with more and more oil, the water layer, which is going to be our hydrosol, the air temperature, floral water hydrosol, uh, those are also another product, a byproduct of steam distillation. They're sold and used in aromatherapy. therapy. You can produce as much of that as you want with one of these, but that hydrosol is just going to be recycled back into the kettle as this pushes this water down. It's going to keep recycling the same water over and over again. This is called cohobation. This is the process of cohobation where you recycle the same water over and over. Not every uh, mass uh, production distillation is set up like this. It's just a straight distillation where they just keep injecting more and more steam. They don't recycle the distillation more. Okay, so that's about it. Any questions at this point? Yeah. That's the oil. And it's coming over a little fast. So I turned this down a little bit. What you want this coming over about one drop per second, really, the ideal. 
uh, we put in, I don't know, probably about 600 grams of flowers in here, so we should get six mils, six, six grams of oil out, something like that. It's a 1% yield. So it's not a lot. It takes, it's, it takes a lot of material to make these oils. That's why the real oil is not going to be as cheap as fragrance. So, fragrance. But is lavender one of the more all yeah, flowers. yeah, because lavender is mass. Is there's a lot of production of lavender, but it is still uh, a very adulterated oil because of the reason, the fact that you have the two main chemicals in lavender are linalool and linalool acetate, and they're also two of the most. This is what I do. You can't recommend anybody else do this. Um, personally, I try to make. Yeah, you can do that too. It's very, I mean, you can even ingest the water straight as it is. It's just distilled water with a tiny amount of oil uh, dissolved in it from the distillation. It has a strong odor, but it's yeah. very little odor. I mean, very little oil actually in it. Less than, probably less than 10 percent. And you sell that too? We only sell, only hydrosols that we handle right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.